Hi everyone! So we're going to be making this butterfly tank top. It's totally customizable. I'm actually going to be showing you a few different ways that you can make this cute summer top. So this was actually the first design that I did with color work. I made this in January of 2021. Um, the full pattern can be found on my website along with the graph that you'll need if you want to add the butterfly onto your tank top. You're going to need some yarn. Um, you can really experiment with different kinds of yarn here and different hook sizes to get more loose or tight stitches. The example uses a medium size 4 yarn and a 5mm crochet hook. You're also going to need a tape measure and some scissors and some yarn needles and at least four stitch markers. Here is an example of single crochet versus half double crochet. It's the same graphic except the single crochet produces shorter stitches. So this top is worked in rows that are the entire length around the chest. Um, and then it is seamed up the back afterwards. Um, so after we work it a little bit, you'll be able to figure out how um, many rows you're going to need and how many stitches around. Um, you can change the thickness of the straps and make the top any length that you would like. So you can add any graphic to this top. Um, something that you made, something that you found, or something from one of my patterns. All you need to know is the um, amount of rows by stitches that you're going to have and make sure that the graphic will fit. Um, I like to crochet over the ends and keep them all to one side for a nice neat look. Now if you choose not to add a graphic, um, you'll have the option of making loose stitches and I'm going to show you the difference here um, between the kind of feeling of the fabric. Looser stitches make much more flexible fabric. It's breathable, good for summer, um, and both of the tops are constructed in the exact same way. So to start off, we're going to need some measurements or rough estimates of the total length that you would like the top, um, the point from where you want the top to end on the chest and the back across the shoulder, and finally around the bust. Um, keep in mind here if you want the shirt to be loose or fitted. So you're going to start off with a slip knot and begin working a chain. So a crochet chain is a stretchy thing. If you want your top to be loose and flowy like the examples, you're going to measure your chain um, without stretching it. If you want a fitted top, you're going to stretch your chain and then measure it. The example tops are 108 stitches around, um, and so that is how long I started the chain with and that would be for about a size 34 bust um, to get you a loose fit. And then you're just going to decide if you want to do single crochet and add a graphic or if you want to do loose flowy stitches. Um, but they work up really quick so you can do all that you want to. So once you have a chain that fits around comfortably loose or tight, um, you're going to determine how many turning chains you're going to do. So if you're doing a single crochet, you would do one. If you're doing a half double crochet, you would do one. If you're doing a double crochet, you would put two. If you're doing a treble crochet, you would put three. So you're going to then work into those back loops only, um, and you're going to work all the way um, across the chain. So at the end of row one, you're going to work a turning chain or however many you needed to, and then you're going to turn, 
and then you're going to work back down the length of this piece again. <laughs> So from here, you're going to just keep on working up. If you are adding a graphic at this point, you're going to need to figure out how many rows tall you think you're going to need. You can measure it here and kind of do the math um, to figure out how many rows that you're going to need and to figure out where you would place your graphic in the middle of those rows and also into the center of the length of the stitches that you have. So I've completed the length that I want, and here's how it looks. It's just one long rectangle. Um, your graphic would be here, and everything would be to one side, all of the ends. When you weave in these ends, if you change colors, um, you would weave those all into one side. So you're going to want to fold it inside out. Um, and you can see here, this is how it looks. Um, this will be the dimensions of the front of it. Um, pretty simple, pretty cute. That's where the, the straps will go. So you fold it inside out. So you're going to fasten off, um, but you want to leave the tail that is twice the whole height of the top. So measure it down and then measure it back up and then you can go ahead and cut it and tie it off. So then you're just going to take that tail and use a whip stitch or a mattress stitch or some other flat stitch and go ahead and seam the back. Since I changed colors, I am going to take these tails and use those to um, sew together those stripes just to make it a little more seamless. So that's how it looks when it's done. You're going to want to make sure that you place your stitch markers equidistant from that seam. Um, so the back straps will be attached there in the center and then you want the front ones to also be equidistant. Um, if you put a graphic here you'll already know what the center is but if not you'll have to you know subtract from the other ones. Um, I like to put the front straps a little bit farther away from the back ones because um, I feel like it stays on the shoulders a little bit better that way um, but it just depends on the body shape of the wearer. So we're trying it on um, and you can kind of get a feel for where you want the front straps to land. Um, so it's easier to start with the back if you um, add your stitch markers to the back and then you can count from the back to the front to make sure that you're getting uh, the correct amount of stitches between. So when you add the straps you're still working inside out. Um, so you're going to pull up a slip stitch through that stitch marker and then you're going to make a chain that corresponds to the length that you need it and remember the stretch so this time you definitely want to um, account for that I actually overdid it here um, I went about five inches too far I was aiming for 13 so you definitely want to stretch out that strap to account for the weight of the garment um, and you don't want to leave any slack on that. So I'm going to subtract some stitches here and you can see that that stretch makes it one or two inches different so um, I've ended up subtracting it to 36 stitches. So you're going to want to remember the number that you did for one strap that way you can apply it to the next strap. So making sure that you don't have any twists in your chain, you're going to slip stitch to the stitch marker that is directly in front of 
the back one. Now here's how it looks. If you want to add thickness, you can do so here. Um, you will slip stitch into the next stitch in, and then you're going to turn and skip that first slip stitch, and then you're going to loosely slip stitch across the whole length of that chain in the back loops only. When you get back here, you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch in on the back side. And you can fasten off here, um, but if you want to keep adding more thickness, you can. You can just do the same thing, do another slip stitch, and then go back and forth in the same fashion. You could also work towards the outside. It doesn't make too much of a difference. And then just do the same thing on the other side. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. I hope it works out for you. Make sure to tag me in what you make this summer. Um, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy!